Lesson 7.2, Dividing by 10. There are many strategies that we can use to divide by 10. We can use repeated subtraction, we can use a number line, and we can use a multiplication table. We can use repeated subtraction to divide. We have 30 divided by 10, and we start with 30 and subtract 10 until we reach 0. 30 minus 10 is equal to 20. We put the 20 up here and subtract 10. That equals 10. We put that 10 up here and subtract another 10, and we get to 0. Then we count the number of times we subtracted 10. We did it 1, 2, 3 times. We subtracted 10 3 times, so 30 divided by 10 is equal to 3. We can use a number line to help us divide. Here we have 60 divided by 10. We start at 60, right here, and we jump back by 10s until we reach 0. Then we count the number of jumps we made. So we start at 60, right here. We look at the scale of our number line and see that it's in increments of 10. So we're going to jump back to 1 tick bar mark on the number line each time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We made 6 jumps. 60 divided by 10 is equal to 6. When we use a number line to help us divide, we make jumps that go back towards 0 to the left. When we use a number line to help us multiply, we make jumps that start at 0 and go towards the right. Counting back on a number line is like using repeated subtraction to divide. Jumping back 10 is like subtracting 10 each time. 60 divided by 10 is our problem. We started at 60, and we take away 10. Now we're at 50. We take away another 10. Now we're at 40. Take away another 10, we're at 30. And another 10, we're at 20. Another 10, we're at 10. We take that away, and we're at 0. And we did 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 jumps. 60 divided by 10 is 6. It's just like repeated subtraction. And remember that division and multiplication are inverse operations. We learned about those in video 6.7, and there'll be a link in this description if you haven't seen it. Inverse operations undo each other. They're opposite operations. 24 divided by 6 is equal to 4, and 6 times 4 is equal to 24. We can use related facts to help us divide or to help us check our answer. And the dividend in division will be the product in a related multiplication fact. We can use a multiplication table to help us divide. Our problem is 40 divided by 10. And because division is the opposite of multiplication, we can use this multiplication table to help us divide. We think of a related multiplication fact. We have 40 divided by 10. We can think some number times 10 is equal to 40. 40 divided by 10 is equal to some number. Some number times 10 is equal to 40. We find the factor 10 in the top row. It's way over here. See it? It's right there. Here's the tens. It's coming all the way down here. We found it in this row. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And we look down the column for the product 40. So we look down this column until we see the 40. It's right there. See it? Then we look to the left to find the unknown factor. So here we have our 40, and we follow it to the left, and it's a 4. And the quotient is going to be the unknown factor. And the dividend is the product. We know 40 divided by 10 is equal to 4. 
4 times 10 is equal to 40. The dividend, the amount in all, is going to be one of the products in the multiplication table. It's going to be one of the answers. And we use the divisor as one of the factors, and we're looking for a missing factor. We used 10 as one of the factors, and we looked for the 4 as the missing factor. Knowing our multiplication facts for 10 as a factor will help us divide by 10. 10 times 3 is equal to 30, therefore 30 divided by 10 is equal to 3. 10 times 4 is equal to 40, therefore 40 divided by 10 is equal to 4. And 10 times 5 is equal to 50, therefore 50 divided by 10 is equal to 5. Do you see a pattern? I do see that the product is the dividend. I see they both have 10. And I see that this factor is now the quotient. Do you see any other patterns? Look at 30 and 3. The 3 is just missing a 0 in the 1's place to be the 30, isn't it? And the 4 is just missing a 0 to be a 40. And so is the 5. It's missing a 0 to be the 50. Dividing by 10, we can just take this 0 off, can't we? And we can see how the related facts are, we have a factor and a factor and a product. The product is the dividend. Our divisor is one of the factors. And our quotient is one of the factors. We can find the quotient. We have 30 divided by 10. How many 10s can go into 30? I know 10 times 3 is equal to 30. Our missing quotient would be a 3. Here we have 90 divided by 10. How many 10s will fit into 90? I know that 10 times 9 is 90. So 90 divided by 10 must be 9. And notice that I wrote the quotient above the 1's place. This 3 is 3 1's. So we wrote it above the 1's place for the 30. See that? That's how many times it fit into this entire number. Here we need to find less than, greater than, or equal to, and we need to write it in the circle. And the best way to do this is to solve each side of the circle to find the values. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 2 times 10 is equal to 20. 5 is less than 20. So we put a less than sign. Here we have 10 times 0. Well, 10 times 0 is 0. 0 times any number is 0. That's the 0 property rule, isn't it? Here we have 0 divided by 10. If we had zero cookies and we put them into 10 boxes, how many cookies would be in each box? There's no cookies, so it would be zero, wouldn't it? Zero is equal to zero. Here we have six plus zero. Well, that's six. And here we have six times zero. Well, that's zero. Six is... Do you know? It's an easy one, isn't it? It's greater than 0. Here we have 17 plus 5. We need to add these. We start at 17 and count on 5. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So this side is 22. And 3 times 7. Do you remember 3 times 7? It's 21. Now we can put the sign in. 22 is greater than 21. So to solve problems like this, solve each side 
so that you can compare the answers to see if they're less than, greater than, or equal to. Tala made 50 bracelets in 10 days. How many bracelets did she make each day? We need to divide the 50 bracelets by the 10 days. We have 50, that's how many she made in all, divided by the 10 days that it took her to make them is going to equal how many bracelets she made each day. We can use a related fact and think some number times 10 is equal to 50. Well, I remember that 5 times 10 is equal to 50. That means 50 divided by 10 is equal to 5. She made 5 bracelets each day. So we can divide by 10 by using repeated subtraction. We can jump back on a number line, or we can use a multiplication table to find the answer. Remember, when you're doing problems like these, to solve each side so that you can easily compare the answers to find if it's less than, greater than, or equal to. I hope you're having a really nice day, and I'll see you for our next lesson. Bye.